I've met many of you here before. I want to thank you for coming out. I want to thank uh, Panda Express for providing lunch to many of us here. Um, this is the third in a five-part uh, outdoor hospitality series. Um, we've already heard from um, me about careers in the outdoor industry. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about where all that data is stored. Or I'll let Jake talk about that. We had Aramark uh, two weeks ago. And today we have Guest Services Incorporated. And a funny little story here is the way I found out about Guest Services is when um, I worked in for Hyatt Hotels for two and a half years. And then I got a job in consulting. And my boss turned out to have been a concessioner working with Guest Services in the national parks. And that was a transformational boss for me because I began to understand that all these skills I had in the hospitality industry could be used in these really cool places, national parks, state parks, uh, uh, forests as well. And so Guest Services is one of those premier companies operating in those environments. And we're going to have two senior executives with that organization present with us today. But uh, I just want to thank you for taking your time and coming and learning about this. And as I said at the beginning, and I will say at the end, if you are interested in this industry sector, even want to try it out for a summer, I am on the board of advisors. I'm coming here to help you become successful and my information will be available. So if you're curious or you wanna ask more questions, please, 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 please use me as a resource. I can't guarantee you a job, but I will help prepare you to make sure that you are positioned for those jobs. And this industry, the outdoor hospitality sector of the hospitality industry needs the talent pool that exists in this room here. And you are all capable and qualified to help this industry out. So I'm super excited to hand this to Margie and then Margie will hand it off to I think Stephanie. I, I think I have it. Welcome. My name is Margie Jones. I'm the Dean for the Collins College of Hospitality Management. Please take a minute to join me in thanking Margaret for an amazing uh, Herculean effort. Uh, she mentions that she is an alumna of the program and it is, oh, you didn't. Okay. She's an alumna of the program and uh, she came to the board about a year ago you can tell she's got low energy and um, we were just really fortunate that she was retiring from her day, full day job. And um, I kind of snapped at the opportunity. This is an exciting field. And I think who's been to more than one of these? And do you keep coming back because you keep learning? It's pretty exciting, right? And it, it's a wonderful, she's done a very, very deep dive on how to even look for a job, which I think is just a huge value added. So thank you, Margaret. And I will turn it, I want to also thank Jake for his time and coordination and Cherie because they make it look pretty easy. And Jake is giving me the eye that if you didn't sign up, but you came in, you are free to grab a lunch because we think we're set. So if you registered late, please go ahead and get up and feel free to eat. I think it's easier if we wait one minute, Stephanie. They're starving students. They climb 77 steps from the parking lot every day. I'm just, that's my way to tell you they're fit and they're really ready for service in a national park. You don't need to worry. Okay. Give us just one second. And then uh, if you would, once I know oh, it's a little bit of a rush over here, I can't show you, but one second. <laughs> Just two seconds and I will ask you to go ahead and introduce yourself. And thank you, Stephanie Toshel and Laura Pliscott or Pliscott. How do you say your last name? It's really Sherman. So I just haven't changed it on my Zoom. So anyway, oh, but okay. uh, that's, <laughs> that's my so sorry. It's okay. When you introduce yourself, you can tell them, forgive me. I think mine just says M. So I'm, I'm completely. Camp. <laughs> okay. So Stephanie, I think they're just about to sit down. And if you would, please help me welcome Stephanie and you may start and tell them a little bit about yourself and launch in wherever you're ready. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much for having us. Um, so my name is Stephanie Scholl. I am the Employee Experience Manager with Guest Services. Um, my background is actually mostly in retail customer service versus hospitality. Um, from 2005 to 2015, I worked at Kohl's department store. I started 
as a part-time cashier and ended my time there as a store executive. So my role was in, uh, my final role there was in HR and operations. So I worked on operational launches such as buy online, pick up in store, ship from store, e-signs and more. And I also did the interview and the hiring um, and some partnering with corporate HR on employee relations issues. I was also a member of the campus recruiting team for Kohl's, which means I traveled around to college campuses and recruited for our manager and training program. And that focus on recruiting, as well as some of the interview and hiring I did in my store is kind of what led me into more of a focus on a recruiting career. So I recruited um, for a staffing company for about two years. Then I came to guest services in 2018 as the talent acquisition specialist or corporate recruiter. So in addition to posting jobs and assisting managers through the hiring process, it was also my responsibility to advise managers on what candidates wanted to see. And the job market has changed a lot in the last decade or so. So I got really passionate about employee experience as a focus. Uh, Someone who's experienced employment at all different levels uh, was something that it was important uh, for me to be involved in. So I've kind of transitioned into this new role of employee experience manager. Um, I feel like I can offer a a realistic perspective um, to our corporate HR team about what the employees do experience out in our operations. Uh, Some of the things that I've done in my role include um, introducing a paid parental leave policy, upgrading our PTO accrual to be more competitive, uh, introducing PTO carryover, and events like this where I get to interact with potential candidates and interns where I can talk directly about our, uh, our company and our location. So that's a little bit about me. I'll let Laura introduce herself and then we can get into some of our properties and learn more about the company. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you all. Thank you, Margaret, for allowing us to participate. I just tell you, I know Stephanie's going to go a little bit more detail into guest services, but I will tell you this. We are a company that has been around for over close to 108 years. There's not a lot of companies like that anymore. We have stayed with the guest services name. We started in the early... um, in the early stages of World War I, feeding the troops in Washington, D.C., and we started as a food uh, management company and have expanded. We have, at this point in time, we have over 275 locations across the country. Uh, some could be as small as two employees to as large as we have a ski and golf resort in Minnesota, about three hours north of the cities that has over 300 employees, both seasonal and full-time. So various sizes various degrees and various um, job opportunities across the board. But I will say when we talk about state and uh, national parks, what an exciting career for anybody because you get to be outside enjoying uh, what you like to do as well as working and engaging our guests and visitors to have an outstanding, memorable experience that they'll take home with them forever. I myself started my career in the hotel industry. My father was actually a hotel general manager, so I started pretty young um, and continued in that role. And I worked for Hilton Hotels for over 22 years, managing Doubletree Hotels, primarily on the East Coast in Florida. And then back in 2010, I was approached by guest services because they had two had a double tree hotel in Naples, Florida that we own, that we own and operate. And if I wanted to come and work for them, well, at that time it didn't really work timing wise for me. But then later on, I did go back, go to guest services. Um, and one is the district manager and then uh, is, was promoted to assistant vice president and now vice president of our hospitality division. And our hospitality division alone is based in Naples, even though our corporate offices are in Fairfax. And from that, we have state, we have lodging, we have recreation, we have uh, condo management. Um, and when I say recreation, it could be as kayaks to houseboats that we rent out in Lake Mead and Mojave to, you know, that are triple deckers that people can experience with their families. Uh, and then we have a lot of a number of lodging accommodations we manage in state and national parks across the country and then food establishments as well, whether it's just a kiosk or a full service fine dining restaurant. So various different opportunities within our company, you do always find that you're juggling you know are you talking about kayaks or are you talking about a hotel room but it keeps it interesting and there's always opportunities we have never really um 
looked away at an opportunity, but we want to make sure that it's a good fit for our company. We want to make sure it's a good fit, fit for their employees and how we can grow. And as Stephanie also mentioned, the heart and soul of any company is your employees. So in her new role and what she's doing in employee engagement is really helped and improved our positioning within the um within our industry to attract people and retain them. We also give people the opportunity to transfer, to move, to be promoted. Uh, I want to say, Stephanie, we're probably going to repeat it. This year alone, we had over 50 internal promotions within our company, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and we want to continue to grow that as we continue to grow as well. Now I'll turn it back over to Stephanie to talk a little bit more about guest services and what opportunities we have. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Laura. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, we are guest services or a hospitality management company. Um, basically, we partner with locations across the country and provide services in areas of food and beverage, lodging, uh, retail, recreation, and more. Uh, we have many well-known locations across the country, um, and we are also an approved concessionaire with the National Park Service. And today I'm gonna to go through some of our company background as well as highlight some of our operations, including many that have internship opportunities available or seasonal jobs available. Um, so I'm gonna get started by giving you a little bit of history on guest services or GSI as we call it internally, Guest Services Inc, we call it GSI. So these two pictures on the uh, cover slide, the top one is from Mount Rainier National Park and the bottom one is from the Everglades National Park. So basically two opposite ends of the country, Washington State and the very tip of Florida, and we're in both locations. So a little bit of history, Laura already mentioned, we were founded in 1917 with feeding uh, government employees during World War I in Washington, DC. And in fact, we do still do food service on the National Mall. Um, we have the uh, contract with the National Park Service. We manage a lot of the kiosks throughout the National Mall with food service. So if you've been to Washington, D.C., um, the Lincoln Memorial on each side are two kiosks with like food and retail. Those are our locations or in front of the Air and Space Museum or the Nat Natural History Museum. We still are um, still down there in D.C., but we did grow into other hospitality services and change the name from government services to guest services. Uh, we are governed by a board of trustees, so we don't have like an owner of the company, which means that our excess profits go into 501c3s and charitable, charitable entities, etc., as opposed to a person. Um, these numbers are a little bit outdated, over 4,000 employees serving more than 35 million guests at approximately 350 facilities nationwide. Um, we are close to that. I believe those are pre-COVID numbers, so we're close to being back to that. Um, and we do a wide range of services, including luxury condominium communities, senior living, uh, hotels and resorts, state and national parks, dining, restaurants, recreation, retail, and special events. So this is a map of just our operational reach. Um, each little pineapple is either one location or a group of locations, depending. Um, our California locations are Big Sur, which is in Pfeiffer, Big Sur State Park, and the Doho Cafe at Doheny Beach. If you like the Beach Boys, you might recognize uh, Doheny. And um, a large portion of our business, as you can see, is in Florida. We have a lot of uh, Florida state parks, including Leaky Wachee, Homosassa Springs, Blue Springs, Wakulla Springs, Rainbow Springs, and more. A lot of springs in Florida. And we also have a large presence in the D.C. metro area. Uh, D.C. metro units are more of the government and business dining, which is when we partner with uh, government agencies or businesses like law firms and we manage their on-site cafeterias. But we do have outdoor recreation in D.C. because um, we do manage a lot of the boathouses along the Potomac in uh, downtown D.C. So... Um, this is just like kind of a breakdown of some of the examples of uh, locations that we have. Hotels, we do have Doubletree. Um, we do have a lodge at Breckenridge in Breckenridge, Colorado. So this is just a kind of a generic list. I'm going to go through some of our properties in more detail in a few slides, uh, but we wanted to just provide a little bit of an idea. So outdoor recreation, we have boathouses in Boston and Washington, D.C., 
a lot of adventure and like um boating opportunities in Florida as well kayaking and paddle boats and stuff like that uh, we do a couple schools and colleges not too many of those our focus is more on hospitality and recreation and then national uh, state and national parks we got Mount Rainier Big Sur Everglades Rainbow Springs we have the National Mall as I mentioned and so you can see that there are probably many state and national parks on that list that you recognize so even if you have not heard of guest services as a company you've probably heard of some of the properties that we manage um, so that's just a list uh, to give you an idea of like how big our scope is so now that you've seen like a general list of our properties, I wanna go through some of our properties to highlight them specifically for internship opportunities or even summer jobs, if that's what you're looking for. So first I wanna talk about Mount Rainier National Park. Um, the picture you see is of a uh, Paradise Inn, which is over a hundred years old. And a lot of the um, materials used to build the Paradise Inn were actually pulled right from the park itself. They have these beautiful big logs inside that were a part of a, a fire. They didn't cut any down to put in there, but they use the ones that were destroyed in the fire. And it's actually very beautiful, but I'm not going to um, read through the entire case study, but on Mount Rainier, four main locations on the mountain. So we have multiple retail operations, uh, food and beverage operations and lodging. The Paradise Inn, the Jackson Visitor Center and the Sunrise Day Lodge are all open seasonally because they're all more towards the top of the mountain or halfway up probably and are blocked the roads are not accessible in the winter but we also have the national park in which is open year-round the peak season is summer so they would likely be looking for summer interns or uh, summer workers but if uh, the winter internship aligns more with your timing we can definitely get you in touch with the manager at the national park in that is open year-round to see what might be available and this location does have housing. So Stephanie, can you talk a little bit at this point when you talk about housing, what that means? Um, sure. Because some of these folks aren't familiar with what that means. Yeah, of course. So um, the accommodations are gonna vary based on the location, but essentially housing is typically like dorm style housing um, where you would be responsible for bringing your own like linens and everything like that, but your basic, you know, furniture is provided a bed, a dresser, a desk, probably. Um, depending on the location, it could be single or it could be shared. And we even have some locations that have like RV housing. So it's like living in um, like a mobile home or a modular home. So it really depends on the location as to what the housing accommodations are. And certainly if you see a location that I go through today that you're interested in, um, our talent acquisition team is already prepared to answer your questions um, specifically about each property. We also have the ability to, um, you know, coordinate transportation to these locations. If you don't have a car, um, you know, just keep in mind that some of these locations are remote. So if we do have to coordinate travel from the airport to the location, you might be limited, you know, once you get there. And then Stephanie, can you talk about how that is priced? The housing is priced just so, I mean, if people are normally living in this town, they may be living at home, or let's say they wanna to go to another town, they probably have to pay a city market rent. Can you just talk about how that's structured in the employment sure. agreement? Yeah, of course. Um, so the rate is definitely gonna change based on the location. I would say our average employee housing cost is probably gonna be around two to 300 a month. And that is usually done by paycheck deduction, and we do pay biweekly. So um, it's just going to deduct, you know, a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars per paycheck um, for your housing costs. And some locations, such as Mount Rainier, for example, also have um, food plans. So the, the I think Mount Rainier is our only one that does a deduction for food. Um, but other locations that have housing will offer you discounts on the uh, on the food and beverage at the location. Thanks. Well, typically, can I just interject? Typically, there is at least one meal that's provided free for anybody that's in the employee housing. Oh, and right, promote, like the shift meal, yeah. Yeah, shift meal at our locations, and then there'll be discounts on for others um, 
in, in regards to whether you're dining in or we have one location that does have housing it's a remote location uh in a national park uh national recreation area where you have to have your food shipped in by boat um mm-hmm. to keep in your employee awesome. so there's all kinds of different opportunities yeah. <laughs> by just incredible experiences yes varies by location is definitely the answer to a lot of questions yeah. but i'll try to uh i'll try to give as much um detail as i can so um, one of our other locations uh, is the lodge at Breckenridge. So this is in Breckenridge, Colorado. It's open year round. Um, it's a very popular destination for weddings. It is not a ski resort because we don't manage any of the ski slopes. However, team members who work during the winter months typically get a bonus that will cover the cost of a ski pass for the local resorts. Um, And then it's still a very popular destination in the summer because of hiking and weddings and things like that. Um, So this location would have um, food and beverage and, you know, lodging, hotel management, and housing is also available here. It's the same, done the same way through a payroll deduction. And it's limited, um, but it is available. So if this is a location you would be interested in, that's something that we can discuss um, with the town acquisition team and the manager. We also manage the Big Sur Lodge, which is in Big Sur, California, on the Pacific Coast Highway. Um, This is a location that is also open year round. It also has housing available, and we do manage the retail operations, food and beverage, and lodging. So this is a really great location for people who love the outdoors. It's very remote, uh, so it's, you know, definitely for people who might want to take a break from city life. Um, And housing, I think I mentioned, is also available at this location. A few additional locations with housing. Um, So the Flamingo Adventures location in the Everglades National Park. Uh, That is open year round. Their peak season is in the winter months, um, but it is open year round. Right now, this is a great place for outdoor recreation, jobs and internships. However, we are opening a new lodge and restaurant, I think this month. So once those operations are like more established, we should have some internship or um, employment opportunities there as well in hospitality and food and beverage. So this picture in the middle is a picture of the eco tents that we currently operate. Um, And it's just like a really beautiful location, no light pollution. Uh, This one, housing is available and is basically, I wouldn't say required, but almost required because the location of the, um, actual unit is 40 miles inside of the park. So, um, you know, it's possible to live in the town where the entrance to the park is, but it's 40 miles away (laughs) to the unit. So it's very remote. We also operate uh, six locations around Lake Mead. So the Lake Mead National Recreation Area. Um, Those locations include Temple Bar Marina, Willow Beach Marina, Echo Bay RV Village, Cottonwood Cove, Colville Bay Marina, and Boulder Beach. And throughout these locations, we have recreation, uh, food and beverage, and hospitality and retail. Uh, We also offer Hoover Dam Tours from the Boulder Beach site. And all six of those sites are located one to two hours from Las Vegas, depending on which location you're going to. So we do have a lot of um, you know, opportunities for team members to kind of get out and explore when they're not working. And they are open year round. All six locations are open year round. They all have different peaks just depending on um, the time of year and what they offer. So the RV villages typically peak in the winter for the snowbirds and then the marinas typically peak in the summer, but it does vary. Stephanie, isn't this where you have houseboats? Do you want to talk about the houseboat operation? Sure. Yes, we have houseboats. Um, So the houseboats are on uh, Lake Mead and uh, Lake Mojave. So uh, I think Lake Mead is above the Hoover Dam and Lake Mojave is below. And then um, 
you, you know, people can take these boats out into the lake and it's like a floating hotel room, basically. I don't have any pictures of that, but I actually got to tour one of them. I was in, um, I, I toured all the Lake Mead operations last year and it really is like a floating hotel room. There's a kitchen, a bathroom, so a couple of bedrooms, um, and some people will rent them and just leave them parked in the marina the whole time. Others will take them out into the lake. So it's pretty cool. We also have a houseboat operation in Lake Roosevelt in Washington, um, but that location does not offer housing at all. So we also have houseboats at Flamingo too. Oh, we do. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so that's kind so of a niche market. And I will say, I'm sure everybody's heard a lot of, uh, press about Lake Mead and not having enough water, but everyone had a great summer this year. They were out in the water all summer and you are able to rent houseboats and get around it. The water levels have declined, but they also um, are starting to rise back up with the uh, snowfall that was experienced last winter. Nice. Yes. Um, so Cottonwood Cove, which is pictured in the bottom right, that is on Lake Mojave, which isn't experiencing the low water levels. So um that one's been great and then the way that they do the floating docks is very fascinating <laughs> how they have to you know move them out as the water goes out and back in it's pretty cool um we also have Stahican which is the very very remote location that Laura mentioned this is located at the North Cascades in Stahican Washington it's a summer seasonal location and it does offer housing uh housing is required because it is so remote um to get there you have to take a flight a several hour drive and then like what is it a 3 hour ferry ride wow. um and before you get on the ferry to go to work for the summer, you can create an account at the grocery store. And that's what Laura mentioned. You will order your groceries to be delivered on the ferry. So that one is very remote, really great for people who love the outdoors, though. There's a lot of really cool things. It's right at the end or the beginning, I guess, which way depends on which way you're going of the um, the trail that goes from Mexico to Canada. So I think this is like right at the, the end. Pacific Coast trail. Yeah, the yeah. Pacific Coast we're and it's 80 miles from the Canadian border yeah um so that's also a location that we have that offers housing and this is summer it's only open in the summer for seasonal work and then I wanted to highlight um two more properties that don't have housing I know that some students might have family members in these areas or are from nearby and can still consider these locations so I did want to bring them up um, our Double Tree by Hilton, which Laura talked about, it's located in Naples, Florida, is an award-winning Hilton location. I actually was at a Double Tree in um, Asheville, North Carolina this year, and I mentioned the Naples location, and like everyone knew about it. So it's very, um, it's award-winning. People know about it throughout the Hilton, other Hilton locations, and it is part of the Hilton brand, so potential uh, interns or summer hires will receive that additional brand specific experience. So it is owned and operated by guest services, but it is branded as a Hilton. So um, this location also housed some of our displaced team members after the hurricane that swept through Naples last year. So this is a really amazing team that runs this location. They're open year round, um, but as I mentioned, there is not housing available. It's uh, in the Naples, Florida area if you're interested in exploring other housing options in that area. And then uh, lastly, wanted to highlight our Bear Mountain location. This is in Bear Mountain, New York, which is about, I think, one to two hours outside of New York City. Um, we operate food and beverage, retail and lodging there, um, as well as catering operations. This is a very popular location for weddings. They do a big Oktoberfest event every year. It used to be um, you know, 100 years ago, it was a very popular weekend destination for uh, people from the city to go out and kind of get away from the city. So it was kind of renovated um, a while back to bring it back to that, you know, status. So um, it's located about an hour from the Culinary Institute and Poughkeepsie. So uh, just keeping this location in mind, there's a lot of opportunities here as well. They are open year round, but they do not have housing.
So those are some of the properties I wanted to highlight to you guys today. Um, if you have any interest in those properties or any of the other ones you saw on the lists that were at earlier in the presentation, please reach out to us. Um, the internship opportunities are going to vary by location and season and housing availability. Uh, but the good thing about that is we can customize the experience as needed. So we really would look forward to you reaching out to us to talk a little bit about your interests and what you're looking for so that we can help match you up with the perfect um, location and perfect manager. We have culinary, hospitality, and recreation management internship curriculums available. So those are already prepared, but again, those are customizable to meet the needs of your program or your class requirements. And we can also, you know, review and adapt to any preset curriculums that you might have. Um, if you're interested in any of the locations you saw, please reach out to talent at guestservices.com um, and include the following information or just your contact information and they'll reach out to you to get the information that they need. Um, our talent team is already aware that Laura and I are doing this presentation today. So they're ready for your emails. They're ready to put you in contact with the right location manager based on the information you've provided. So whether or not it's an internship or just like a summer job in between semesters, you know, we are definitely interested in getting you the information that you need, so. Does anyone have any questions? I I have a question. I I am I always was asking questions, Stephanie, in class, and I'm going to ask a, a leading question here. Um, we have everybody from freshmen to maybe some juniors or seniors here, um, and you talked about how the part the outdoor hospitality jobs are typically seasonal. Can you talk a little bit about experiences you've had with somebody who maybe? worked one summer, had a great experience, and then graduated, and then, you know, was part of the family and moved on, because I think that's part of what students want to understand. I think we have some students who are interested in trying things, which we think is a great idea, but then other ones who are like, okay, if this is for me, how do I make sure that I have a career when I graduate? Sure. Uh, so a lot of the units that we mention are seasonal in operation. The peak season is you know, maybe in the summer, um, but there is a staff that is employed all year round because there's a lot of projects and things to do in the off season. Um, I can't think of a person specifically that went from student to full-time. Laura might know of somebody, but I know a lot of people who started seasonally, maybe summer seasonal and transferred to a winter unit and then were promoted into a year round position. It definitely does happen. Um, yearly with our units, especially because we do have some winter and some summer. So we're able to move people around. Um, and, you know, once you're considered year round, even if you're not at the same location every season, you're a guest services employee. So, you know, benefits are available to you and things like that. So um, I hope that answered your question. Can or I just speak to that? Well, yeah, yeah, can please. I just speak to that a little bit further? I'll give you an example of one employee, and this has been it has been going on for, you know, she probably started with this back in 2011, was going to school, was it also part of the Disney intern program, started as an activities, uh, activities um, agent, and now, you know, fast forward 13 years from now, she has been, she went to two other locations, she was moved as an assistant general manager at a lodging accommodation and now is a general manager at our lodge at Wakulla Springs, which is outside of Tallahassee. So she took breaks throughout her career to finish her schooling and then continued to, um, with that. And then what you, anybody has access to is any of our career choices throughout guest services uh, through our website. So if there's something that you like that you'd want to pursue, there's there's opportunities. So if you would go, let's just say to Mount Rainier for the summer, because it does close and there's not a lot of opportunity and you want to return next season, you can look at our other locations and then there's advancement possibilities. And we always will consider a guest services employee above and beyond someone else. I have another employee who has returned for the second year now to Montauk, which is out in Long Island, and has made a decision to continue and uh, will go down to the Flamingo Everglades in the next couple of weeks. But his status had started as seasonal, is now full-time, has full-time benefits, has full-time PTO accrual, and all the N401k possibilities, as well as his um, insurance. So it's 
I think one of the things that is nice it, it, that sets guest services apart is we are a smaller company, so we can customize, um, you know, your career path for you specifically as to where you want to go, where you see yourself today, and then where you sell, see yourself upon graduation. Thank you. We have a question here for you, Laura. Hi, I had a question about graduating students and how would that work with internships? I know you guys do offer um, housing for certain locations, but also is it paid internship or would it be under a certain leadership program because we've already graduated? How, how would that work? Uh, Stephanie, I can st start and Stephanie can finish. I mean, it, all of our internships are paid internships. Um, mm -hmm. the, you know, the only feedback to the the team member is, of course, the housing if you are in one of those locations. But after upon graduation, we would still continue with that internship, um, and then want to work with you to see how your how you would foresee your career moving in the next six months to twelve months, you know, and onwards. We like in the internship programs. There's somewhere we expose you to every different department, and then others where it's job specific. Because if say if you're a culinary graduate, you want to stay in the culinary field, so we keep mm -hmm. you in that area. And then Stephanie, sorry. if you want to add on to that, uh, uh, sure, yeah. And oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. One more. Is it only for summer, or do you guys have something for December? Um. So we have a few units that have peak in uh, the winter. So Flamingo in the Everglades is one of them. And then other units are year round. Um, so like Breckenridge or Big Sur. So there's definitely opportunities if you're graduating in the winter. Um, and like Laura said, we can kind of customize a curriculum to kind of match the areas that you want experience in. And, you know, as to what happens after the curriculum or after the internship, it really depends on, you know, what your relocation availability is um, and where your interests lie and what we have open. But again, as Laura mentioned, it the benefit of us being a relatively smaller company is that we can work with you and put you in touch with people. And, you know, you're not just a number. You're somebody that, you know, if we, we want to develop you and we want to retain you. So we'll do what we can. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank Other you. questions? You don't all you don't always get the talent experience manager in front of you, so this is a great time to ask some questions. Ready? Wow, I got you. <laughs> Hi, I have a question. Uh, can you tell us more about the uh, internship opportunities located in different state? About housing is needed. Uh, we will email it to you, and then how would that work? Like, is it like Will we pay by you or pay us pay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, hold on. Oh. I think uh, the, the thing you've done here by making it so easy, it's almost complicated. <laughs> so can you basically, if this young lady is particularly interested in Flamingo, does mm -hmm. she basically, per those billets, just send you a note saying, hi, I am person A, I was in your presentation, I'm interested in Flamingo, what are my next steps? Is, is it as yeah. simple as that? Is that, what, yeah. is that what you're asking? Yes, she she almost can't believe it's as simple as that. So can <laughs> yes, you just- Yes, yes. This, if you email that email address and say, I'm interested in Flamingo, one of our talent acquisition team members will give you a call just to make sure that they understand what exactly what you need and what you want. And then they'll help coordinate either like a phone call or a virtual call with the manager. So that we can, you know, proceed. Now, if any of you have had been to Wall's class, you know that really before you make that email, you should have somebody else read it, make sure it's spelled correctly. You should probably have your resume ready and you probably should have investigated guest services. So when you get on the phone, you're prepared to talk to them. But as far as the initial reach out, it's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. and, and I particularly wanted to make sure they offered and illustrated opportunities that have housing. Because if you've never been away from home and you want to try something different, and the fact that housing is very inexpensive relative to the wage you're going to get, it's really a great opportunity. We had Daniel V, who Villanovos, Villalobos, who worked for one of their competitors, and he basically is coming home after five months with more money in his pocket than he thought because his housing was in part covered. So think about it. You're in the middle of nowhere. 
You get to play all day. Your housing's real low cost. Where else are you going to spend your money? There's only so many places you can spend your money. So anyways, there's many jobs out there, but these are very interesting. Other questions? Questions, questions, questions. While we're waiting for questions, I guess something I could have brought up is like the types of jobs we have. So I know I mentioned like lodging and food and beverage and recreation, but like, what does that mean? So it could be something like a dock hand or a cashier, a front desk agent, a housekeeper. And if it's an internship opportunity you're looking for, you'll most likely get exposed to multiple areas um, of, so, you know, some of our locations have all three, recreation, lodging, and food and beverage. So you'll be exposed to all of it. So Stephanie, I saw that you have Knott's Best Weddings of 2020. How many event planners in the room? Okay, so explain how someone who wants to do event planning works with your company. Um, so we haven't had um, event interns as of yet. So it's definitely something I that would be new for us and customized. Um, it would probably involve partnering with our corporate marketing team, as well as any on-site sales and marketing people at the location that they're interested in. Um, so I don't have an exact. I can speak a little bit more to that okay. um, because not all of our locations have events, uh, large wedding planning uh, facilities or even corporate events, but we do have a number of them that do. And then we would be able to customize a program. So you'd be exposed to uh, you know, planning from the very yeah. beginning, whether it's uh, creating BEOs, whether it's banquet setup, whether it's serving, bartending, and work, walking you all the way through that experience into the sales efforts as well. Um, but those locations are more limited than some of our um, other areas. But if I mention like Giants Ridge, which is a Minnesota ski and golf resort, they would have a big sir. Um, uh, Breckenridge is another one. Breckenridge in particular, it's probably do about 150 weddings there a year. Um, and that's all year long. And then Bear Mountain is another one that we have. Our busiest wedding season is in the fall, to be honest with you, where we're doing six to seven weddings a weekend. But we'd be able to customize any type of program if somebody's interested in that. Because there may not be a wedding going on or at a corporate event going on, but you're planning for the one that's happening in three to four months or a year out from now. So just getting you through that whole process would be able to customize a program. I had a question. I'm, I'm looking at your site right now, and it says that you are approved operator for Hilton, Marriott's, and Hyatt's. So are there specific um, properties that you work with them, or is, does that mean that you provide employees for them? So I think, um, did you hear that question? Yes. So, okay. Um, we have the Doubletree Hilton in Naples. We had a Marriott location in Virginia that we're still involved with as far as I know, but we don't uh, manage the no, no, employees anymore. Yeah, we have 25%, right? We don't have that, but we do have 25% ownership in there. Uh, and we're preferred vendor for Hyatt. Currently, we don't have any at Hyatt. We were... Um, during COVID, looking at a couple different opportunities to build and develop Hyatt's. We're still in negotiations with Hyatt's for on a new opportunity, but we don't have an existing one at this point in time. We have another question. Um, Get a closer now. So on the slide that we see right now, it says we we have culinary, hospitality, and recreation management internships. My question would be. If you also offer maybe like niche departments like finance, accounting, or HR. Did you get that, Stephanie? Yeah, yep. Um, so we have a relatively small um, corporate team. So kind of similar to what Laura said for event planning, it would have it would likely be a customized uh, experience. We would want to speak directly to the student just to get a good idea of like what you're looking for what your goals are uh, to see if we could you know align with that in an internship opportunity from a finance perspective we there would probably the locations where we do have housing we would probably be able to work because there is always i mean everything you're dealing with is revenues cash uh cash flow so there may be opportunities but our 
uh, court, our accounting offices, our, our national offices are located in Fairfax, as well as HR. And then we have a subsidiary office in Naples, Florida. But again, Naples, we don't have housing, um, but certainly could um, look at those programs if somebody specifically is interested in that. Mm -hmm, for sure. Margie, do you want to say anything in closing? First, I want to say thank you and thank you for the thoughtful questions. I think it's wonderful to see a such a big group understanding that there are these companies that exist that you don't like they run a Hilton. They have a relationship with a Hilton. And so this is a really unique opportunity. And I really appreciate your customized approach to internship, which is one of the big things that we're really emphasizing in the Polytech experience. You know, the idea of PolyX is where you are getting that high impact practice. So an internship, is anybody besides me not anxious to sleep in a tent? <laughs> Okay, I will say that I learned more the one summer I worked in the great outdoors about myself, about how to make people happy. And the guests are fantastic in this setting. And um, I always thought I wanted to work in five star and five star guests are demanding. And these people are lovers of life. So I think they talked about so many things that you value. They give back they have benefits, they do so many things. So think about your whole life when you think about this and what you need and not just the job. It's about you being in the job and everything it means for you. That That's the teacher in me, forgive me. Please uh, help me thank Stephanie and Laura for their time and terrific presentation. And thank you, Margaret, and I'll let you finish. Okay, the last thing I'll do is Jake is going to tell you um, in a minute about where, he will send out where this presentation is saved. All the presentations are being saved in one location. So if you didn't take a picture of the slide, you have access to it so you can be prepared. Um, and then again, I will say, you don't have to dedicate your whole career to this, but it's a good idea to try it out to see if you might like it. And this is one of many options, but it's a great option. And so you know where to find me and ask questions. And then again, I would like to thank you both, Stephanie and Laura. We'll talk to you in about 15 minutes. And then Jake has the last word. Thank you. So just a quick reminder, everything is on Canvas. This will be uploaded um, hopefully by the end of tomorrow. So if you have any questions, want to look at it, it is there tomorrow. And then the last thing is, Margaret talked about if you're going to reach out, you might want to have your resume ready. Resumaniac is coming in two weeks, Tuesday, October 24th um, in the Hilton classroom. So check out Canvas, sign up for it. Um, even if you haven't started a resume, it's a great place to come and just get tips on how to start a resume. If you have a resume that you want to be reviewed, it's a great time to come um, and get that resume in tip top shape. So then you can get a wonderful internship opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.